in order at 4.01 p.m. Please make sure we're all paying attention. Thank you. Okay, we will now move into roll call. Senator Big? Present. Senator Calderon Pitchford? Here. Senator McDavid? Here. Senator Schmidt? Here. Senator Johnson? Here. Senator Muhammad? Here. Senator Shakumbi? Here. Senator Suleiman? Yeah. Senator Brandmeyer? Yeah. Senator Cherry? Yeah. Senator Moore? Here. Senator Batari? Yeah. Senator Patel? Yeah. Senator Schumacher? Here. Yeah. Senator Rouse? Present. <laughs> Senator Maltari? Present. Um, Senator. No, where is he? You're here. Can you tell me your last name one more time? Trewatha. Trewatha, awesome. Here. Oh, it doesn't stand. <laughs> Um, Senator Weinzerl? Here. Senator Soma? Here. Senator Vanna? Senator Bashal? Here. Senator Cook? Here. Senator Here. Nellis? Here. Senator Karki? Here. Senator Prom? Here. Senator Hoysa? Here. Senator Vaca? Okay. <coughs> um, Senator Spursel? Here. Senator Dickey? <coughs> President Omar? Present. And Vice President Trenny? Present. Awesome. So with that, we will now move into presentations. We have a lot today, so make sure we hang in there, keep paying attention. We'll start out with Emmy May. All right. Hey. Okay. Hi. For folks who I've not met, my name is Emmy May. I work with the student organizations here on campus. Um, some of you may know that our zone recognition closed on Monday. Uh, so what I wanted to do today, um, in addition to giving you about 138 RSOs to recognize today, um, is actually walk through the behind the scenes of the process for recognition. Um, so one thing a lot of folks don't realize is there's a lot of kind of moving parts that happen with recognition and as the group that gives the final approval to groups, I thought it would be helpful that you kind of know a little bit more about what exactly went into the vetting process before you're approving the groups. Um, I'm also going through this process so that way if groups come to you and have questions, you're able to kind of explain a little bit more of the behind the scenes on this. Um, so I am going to share some data from recognition this year, but I'm also going to talk through the process uh, just to make sure you're kind of familiar with both sides of that. So, um, so from a student perspective, there's really kind of essentially three steps that go into recognition. The first one is that on Engage, which is our student org platform, they're going to submit a recognition request. Um, when they do this, they're updating their profile information, they're updating their roster, so we need at least five active student members. Um, they're going to be updating their constitution and uploading that for us, and then they'll update their advisor information, provide us with new scheduling and contact information, um, and then right in that recognition request, we actually have an RSO handbook quiz. Uh, this is meant to make sure that they know the handbook exists, um, and so they, we actually do look at that and kind of score based on, or look at what their scores are. Um, it used to be a separate thing, but with some feedback we got in the past, we incorporated this in. Um, the second thing they need to do is attend RSO inauguration. There are two times they can choose from, they just have to pick one. Uh, this fall they were on September 19th and September 25th. Um, and that's really a training time for us. So we sit down with all the student groups and we go through uh, the things that we don't talk about in the handbook. So how do you recruit retain members? How do you work on planning effective events? What are some tips for managing your groups? Um, managing meetings, um, marketing, working with advisors, kind of all those things that groups come to us with questions about, but maybe we don't necessarily cover uh, because there may not always be cut and dry answers. Um, so that's what we do with RSO inauguration. And then once they've completed both of those things, they'll be submitted to student government for final approval. Um, now, we recommend them submitting their request first, and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, but they can technically attend inauguration and then submit their request. It just makes the back end a little bit wonky, for lack of a better term. So this is what students see when they are going through the recognition process. The staff end, however, is a little bit different. So this is not the full process. This is the first two steps on our end. Um, so when a group submits a recognition request to us, we have a lot of stuff that we have to look through. So first, we have to make sure the person submitting it is a student and the primary contact for the group because we require that students submit it as a student-led organization. We require that the primary advisor is a faculty or staff member on campus, so we first have to check and make sure they do in fact work here. Uh, they are on campus, not on sabbatical or medical leave or anything like that. And then we have to actually reach out to that advisor to confirm that they are in fact the advisor. Um, we also have to make sure the Constitution meets the requirements, so there's no <coughs> language excluding anyone based off protected, like, protected classes. Um, there's no, uh, like they're defining how their members are set up, they're defining what happens if their group disbands, how they're managing money. Those types of questions um, are all things that need to be answered in their Constitution. So we have to read every single Constitution. They average about four pages. You'll realize as we get later on to this, we probably read about 1,200 pages of Constitutions in the last month. So. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, we also make sure that you have at least five current MSU Mankato students, so not alums, um, but five actual current students here on campus. We ask that you have a 75% pass rate on the RSO handbook quiz. It is an open book quiz. It really should be 100%. Um, but sometimes, you know, like maybe things are a little bit of a trickier question, but ultimately it should be at least 75%. Um, we also are making sure that the info on your profile is appropriate, so no profanity um, that is relevant to your group. So if you have like a longboarding club, you're not talking about like like chocolate or something, I don't know. Um, <laughs> your profile picture is appropriate, and then also we make sure that your contact information is accurate too. So each one of these recognition requests is probably <coughs> like a 15 page paper by the time all is said and done, that we read through. If everything's right, um, we can approve the recognition request, make sure the advisor confirms and you're moved to the next stage. If those corrections are needed, we have to deny that request, contact the submitter and let them know exactly what corrections are needed, and then we have a record that we update on our end to keep track of where every group is in this process. From there, um, the groups that need corrections have to resubmit, so they don't have to do a new submission, but they do have to resubmit or edit their current submission to put in a new submission. Um, when it comes to inauguration, in between the recognition request and inauguration, we go in and compare all of the RSVPs to what groups we have. And if there are groups that have not RSVP'd, we actually reach out to those groups to say, hey, we noticed you have not RSVP'd yet for inauguration. Um, if there are groups that have RSVP'd for inauguration and then have not submitted a recognition request, then we have to contact those groups and say, hey, we noticed you've RSVP'd for inauguration, but we have no information from your group. Um, we need to get that request. Like, is there something that we can help with to get that ball rolling? Um, after inauguration, when students go, they have to sign in to confirm they've attended and they note all of the groups that they're there with. So some students represent four groups, some students represent one group. We then have to go through afterwards and match up all of those uh, sign-ins with the groups on campus. So to make sure that at least one representative attended an inauguration. Um, if there are, if they've got the recognition <coughs> request submitted, no corrections are needed, and then they've done inauguration, we will let them know that they are moving on to student government for final approval. If they attended inauguration but they didn't submit a request or the request needs corrections, then we have to individually reach out to every single one of those groups to say, hey, we still don't have an approved request from you. Um, and if a group submitted a recognition request but didn't go to inauguration, then we actually have to go back and say, hey, if you don't come and do an inauguration with us, you're not going to be able to be recognized. Nobody wants that. So this is the first two steps. The left half of the screen is step two still. Um, it, but this kind of shows you what happens afterwards. So when we send groups to student government for final approval, afterwards we go through, let them know everything's active. If their page is not already active on Engage, we will flip it to be active. We have to then con pull all of their contact information and send it to the correct parties and make sure it's updated elsewhere online. So there's a lot of work that goes into that side. If they fail to complete by the deadline, we have to notify their primary contact and advisor that the group did fail to complete recognition. We have to switch their engage page status from active to frozen so nobody can see it, and then we have to go in and update our records too. So, when I say our record of everyone and where they're at, this is what I'm talking about. Um, we have a spreadsheet with every group's name, their short name, their primary contact, their advisor, where they are at in the recognition process, what steps they've completed, what needs corrections, what does not need corrections, and we can go through and change based on where they're at in our queue. So if they have not submitted, if they're pending review, um, if they need corrections, if they then submit those corrections, we switch back to pending review, um, and then eventually we can put them to submission approved. Um, we can go in and verify, like, did their roster match up? Did their constitution not match up? So we can actually go in and then see from our notes too where they're stuck in that process. Um, we also double check like which inauguration did they attend, did they RSVP, um, what that process looks like. You can see this is taken earlier today, so most of the groups are green, which is great. Um, but if they're at a stage where maybe they're missing something, you'll see those kind of red or they might be yellow spots depending on where they're at in the process. Um, we also know when we met, last made a review of their request or any changes that were needed there. Um, and then we have a recognition process note section. I'm talking ahead of where my video is going. <laughs> um, so you can kind of see the notes on this side, one we most recently reviewed. And then it, right now, because we're through our recognition process, some of our notes are going to note if it's a new group going through recognition or a previously active group. So for example, this group did not complete recognition and was active, so they're eligible for a probationary recognition, which I'll talk about later. Um, whereas this group um, is a brand new organization, so they just need to complete inauguration and they'll be done. Uh, we also have all of our advisor information in here. Uh, so we go through, we verify all of this. And then there's a tab with our scheduling contacts that we have to go through and verify everything for. Um, eventually this will also be filled in with all of the information for groups for their on-campus bank accounts. So this becomes a pretty dense spreadsheet of what we go through. So um, beyond reaching
reaching out to RSOs when they're at certain stages of the process, we also send out a lot of additional communication. The last thing we want to do is tell an RSO, sorry, you cannot be active anymore, we're deactivating your portal. Um, so this year, recognition opened on April 15th. The idea was that groups could start that process before they even left campus for the summer, as soon as their officers transferred. Um, so on April 3rd, we sent out the announcement. We used Engage, social media. Um, it was in our RSO newsletter. It was shared in student government. Uh, we had posters all over campus for it. Um, we also um, had different stuff going out around the fall, too. Um, transition emails going out, trying to make sure that the word got out there. And we did have some groups submit over the summer, spring, summer, into fall. Um, once we hit August, though, we really started picking up on this. So on uh, the 12th of August, we sent out a reminder to any RSO officers, primary contacts, or advisors with reminders, resource guides for RSOs, and Engage. Uh, part of the reason we also included those resource guides and the Engage information is because as new student leaders come in, there's a lot of basic questions we get as far as like how to check your email, um, how to sign in to Engage even. So hopefully our goal was to try to kind of mitigate some of those questions so we can focus on recognition. Um, on the 27th, additional messaging went out. On Friday the 13th, we contacted any primary contacts and advisors for groups that had not either started their request or if their submission was in progress but hadn't been submitted. Um, we also contacted those groups to say, hey, we noticed that we haven't gotten anything from your group yet. Are they still active? Are they planning to recognize kind of what's going on here? Is it a different primary contact? How can we help? Um, we also contacted any primary contacts and advisors for RSOs that submitted a request that needed corrections. Um, notifying them of the, the corrections that we needed, and then also reminding them to RSVP for inauguration. On the 20th, um, it, we sent out primary contact emails based off where they were at in the process. Any RSO representatives that attended inauguration, but we didn't have a request from, because we had our first inauguration <coughs> on the 19th, were contacted again. Um, it, all the advisors from 2018-19 received a message depending on their group status. Um, so we were doing a lot of reaching out, and this was like individual messages, not just kind of like a bulk mailing. We'd actually go find their organization name, plug it in, and make sure they knew we were specifically talking about what, like which group we were talking about. Then we kind of got into the crazy time, because this is when we had a lot of groups submitting their requests at the same time. It's usually that last week where it gets a bit hectic. Um, we contacted groups that were ready for student government to let them know that they'd been submitted for final approval, which was 84 groups. Um, if there were not people at inauguration for the first one, then we contacted those groups. Um, to say, hey, we noticed you have an RSVP. We really want you to show up this inauguration. Um, and we let groups know if there was an engaged submission that had been started but hadn't been completed to remind them, like, hey, you need to actually submit it, not just start it. We can't read if, it, if it's in progress. After inauguration, we did contact any other groups that came in that we didn't have a request for, and there were a pretty decent number that just kind of showed up. Um, we also started reaching out to some of our partner offices, so like the Multicultural Center, International Center, and Campus Rec, for any groups that we hadn't heard anything from, saying, hey, do you know if these groups are still planning to recognize or not? We just want to make sure that like, if they are, we're not missing them. Uh, and so we did get some response that way as far as like whether groups were still active or not. And then between the last weekend and now, <laughs> um, we continue to reach out to any primary contacts or advisors to see where they're at. Uh, we notified the groups that were approved by student government that they were ready to roll. On, it. on Monday the 30th, we sent kind of a last ditch reminder of, hey, this is where we're at in the process. You need to do this by 11.45 tonight or you're not recognized. Um, and then yesterday we had to then go through <coughs> uh, the switch from active to frozen engaged pages or uh, making sure those groups were notified of what happened or where they were at in the process. Um, so some data on RSO recognition. So we've done a lot of outreach, um, but what we actually read through, we read through a total of 417 engaged submissions or resubmissions. Um, they fall into one of three categories. So 225 were the group's first submission. Um, so it, a lot of these may have needed some corrections on them. Um, 119 ended up having to do a resubmission. Uh, we did have about 73 who ended up having to submit three or more times. And usually what happened with that was the advisor tried to submit the first time, then we said, hey, no, the student's got to submit. The student submitted the second time and they needed corrections, so then we had to go back to them a third time and say, hey, can you please get us the right stuff? It takes us about 20 minutes to go through a submission. Um, and like, granted, that's us going through relatively quickly and to get that initial feedback out. So we spent about 139 hours between myself and a graduate advisor just reading these requests. Um, and not really including any of the additional outreach or questions that we had from student groups or the other areas that we work with too. So um, especially over these last couple weeks, it's been a very hectic time period for us. Uh, so if any of you have probably emailed me in the last week, you may have noticed that I had a thing saying, hey, it's a little hectic, I might get back to you shortly. That's why. With our RSO inauguration, we did have 231 students attend the two inauguration times. Um, in all, we had about 224 organizations represented. We did have five groups that contacted us in advance to do a makeup inauguration, so we're counting them in the 224 because they still got it done. Uh, 
As far as what we covered at RSO inauguration, I touched on this a little bit earlier, but it was more of those big questions um, that student groups asked us. We also tried to make it a little more hands-on, which was something new, so we built this kind of from the ground up. Um, historically, it's been either like a speaker coming in or just somebody presenting the whole time. So this time we broke it into more of like group activities, brainstorms, that type of stuff to try and make it more engaging. Um, and really to help leverage the student knowledge in the room because we do have a lot of well-experienced student leaders. So this is what actually came out of the recognition rates. Um, I went away from three previous years just for comparison. Um, just for a little context, I started in my role in November, which was just after last year's recognition. Um, and the graduate advisor that I work with, Garrett, who's a total rock star, um, he started with us at the end of July. So he had to learn this entire process in like two weeks, um, but he handled it like a champ. <laughs> um, and so this year I'm really excited because we had 97.8% of our groups that started recognition complete, um, which is a really, really good number. It's nice to not have to go back to a bunch of groups and say, hey, sorry, you didn't complete. Um, so yeah. <coughs> so with the RSOs that didn't complete, I did take a look at this. Um, two attended inauguration but did not submit a recognition request. They each, between the contact and the advisor, got seven separate reminders in addition to uh, kind of our other communications. So not like the individual emails or the, um, the newsletters going out or posters or anything like that. Um, and they were told at RSO inauguration that they needed to get their requests in. The two that attended RSO inauguration and submitted but didn't complete their requested corrections were also reminded an additional seven times on top of the personal emails and newsletters. And we did have one group that submitted for recognition, but they needed corrections. And then additionally, they didn't have anyone attend inauguration. Um, it, this was the one submission that came in just a few hours before it closed. So we did strongly encourage groups to submit early in case there were corrections needed, but unfortunately not everyone listened to us. So, so for RSOs that aren't active now, so if they were previously active and they started that process with us, so those five groups that didn't complete, they're gonna have the option to go through a probationary process. This is something that's new in response to some feedback from last year, just before when I started, um, that for groups that maybe started that process and didn't complete for whatever reason, it'd be nice to give them some option to complete. So these groups, as they complete that process, they'll be able to keep some of their privileges, like scheduling spaces, but they're not gonna be able to do things like request funding from student government. So we'll be working with the student allocations committee to make sure that that's kind of monitored and overseen there. Um, if they are a group that did not start the process at all or didn't talk to us at all, the next time they'll be eligible for recognition is gonna be January, so spring 2020 and they'll get more information about that. If it's a brand new RSO, there's no time frame in which they need to be able to recognize. So if you come up with a group idea in October or November or even like that first week of December and you're like, yeah, I wanna start this new group. Awesome, come see us. We're happy to get your new group started. I know we already have two groups in our queue that are brand new groups that we're getting ready to go through and review once we wrap this round of things up. <coughs> um, one final thing, so students who submitted recognition requests or who attended an RSO inauguration will be receiving a survey coming up pretty soon here. Um, we really, really, really want any sort of feedback that students have for us about this process. Any ways that we can communicate better about recognition that's not sending literally 1,200 emails. I don't want to send 1,200 emails. Nobody wants to read 1,200 emails. If there's a better way to reach you, we'd love to use that. Um, how we can make the recognition process more friendly. I know there's, as new student leaders come in, there's a lot of different stuff to navigate. So if there's a way that we can make that more streamlined and more like easier to go through, we would love to know about it. Um, if there's feedback on inauguration, we want to make sure it's useful and it's worth your time because quite frankly, if it's not worth the student's time, it's probably not worth our time either. Um, we also want to know how we can help student leaders feel more prepared. Like, are there things that we could do before students even step on campus for that year that would be more helpful? Um, because a lot of what we get are those really basic questions and if we didn't have such a rock star front desk team in our student activities office right now, there's no way we would have gotten through all of our recognition requests because they were able to step up and answer those questions about like, <coughs> what's my RSO's email? What's my group's not? I want account number. Without that kind of support, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So if there's ways that we can better prepare students who are coming into these roles, we want to know about it. Um, and we also want to know if there's stuff that we covered in inauguration or didn't cover that students wish we did. Um, because if there's things that students are wondering about that we haven't had a chance to answer, we'd like to have the chance to answer that for you in the future. So that was a lot of information. Uh, what questions do you have about the recognition process? Are there any questions for Emmy? Any questions? Yes, Senator Johnson. Can I make a compliment? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you so much for everything you do. Mm. I didn't know about the process before. How much work you put in this? Thank you so much for doing it. Thanks. I mean, credit is credit, or credit where credit is due to both the grad advisor Garrett, who works with me. He like he started at the end of July, and in two weeks he was like powering through requests. So he's a rock star one. Um, but also, I do want to give credit to our front desk because they played a huge part in us being able to get this done. So, yes. Are there any other questions? Any other questions? Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you so much. Next we have
have RHA. Hello, everyone. I might, you saw me last week as the Legislative Affairs um, Chair, and this week I'm here as Secretary of the Residence Hall Association. Uh, thank you. <laughs> um, so this week, what I want to talk to you about is that the Residence Hall Association is, like, I guess, officially declaring its intent to uh, put in a bid to host either a regional business conference or a regional le leadership conference for McCurr. Um, if you don't know what McCurr, I should have made a presentation, I didn't have time, so you'll just have to remember this. Um, so McCurr is the Midwest affiliate for college and resident, college and university residence halls. Um, that's like our parent organization of RHA, it's just a regional collection of residence hall associations. Um, but like I said, we are either going to do a regional business conference or a regional leadership conference. I can explain more about that. If The basic distinction is that the regional business conference is not to be offensive to our um, to our president and to our NCC and to our PCC, but that's where all the boring stuff happens. That's where all the boardroom stuff happens and regional legislation gets passed. Uh, the leadership conference is a bit more fun where there's a lot of like seminars and workshops that people can put on and it's a lot of fun. Um, it is a lot of work though and the Residence Hall Association cannot put on the conference by itself. It is against um, the rules that McCurr has set out for us. So we are looking for additional assistance. We do have to form a separate committee for that. So if you or anyone is interested in helping us out, um, that would be amazing. You can always, so there's different chairs that we have for this, um, for these committees. There's like a dining chair who helps figure out like what these people are gonna eat while they're here for two days. Um, we do, there, we always do a philanthropy philanthropy project. Um, we need someone to help with transportation, with all kinds of things. There's a lot of things that you can help out with. Anyone who has any of those talents be greatly appreciated. You can email me at uh, brian.swankai.msu.edu. Our NCC, uh, Senator Dickey, can always help out as well. He probably knows a lot more about this than I do, since that's more of his purview. Um, and also our president is here as well. So he. Alex Prom, if you need uh, to ask any questions, but that's all I have for today. If there's any questions, awesome. Are there any questions for Brian? Any questions? Any questions? Seeing none, please. <laughs> Next, we have Mavs for Clean Air. because we need a representative on our task force um, to reform our policy on tobacco on campus. So um, there's a, the work that we're doing is funded by a grant um, from American Cancer Society and CBS and involves research um, and feedback on the policy and what's going on with it and tobacco use currently so that we can, our task force is going to kind of rewrite the policy so that it's more effective. Um, this is just like a, a star point out of the survey that we did last spring. So the majority of students, the blue and the orange, are um, the ones who are exposed to secondhand smoke and are concerned about it. So that's a lot of students on campus. Here's just um, another visual. And 84% of students are always often or sometimes or rarely exposed to secondhand smoke. And for a tobacco-free campus, I feel like 84% is a little too high. Um, this one was a question about people's knowledge of the policy and what's allowed. So we can clearly see that people know cigarettes are not allowed on campus. However, people do seem to think under the um, if you look at the gray, the gray bar is prohibited everywhere except designated smoking areas. Our school technically does not have any designated smoking areas, so there's a lot of misinformation and a knowledge gap there, um, as well as if you look at the, um, the numbers for electronic devices like vapes and stuff like that, people seem to think the little blue line um, 
that it's allowed everywhere and it's not. So those are some things that are really important for people changing the policy. Um, and so yeah, it matters because <coughs> if the school wants to be tobacco free, then they should actually be tobacco free. Um, and we just need someone from student government to kind of represent this fact that students are concerned about this and students are exposed to secondhand smoke um, because the, the policy is really what we need your input on. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, are there any questions? President Omar. Um, I may have missed it, but you know how many students participated in the survey? Um, there were over a thousand students, right, Dr. Hunter? 1,600. 1,600 students. Okay. Yep. 1,600, so a good sample. Yeah. Are there any questions? Senator Vice that. So is the goal to get a policy that is actually like enforced by security yes, to like get... The, the biggest problem right now is the enforcement. How right. do we want to enforce? Right. That's why we need more voices because there's a lot of research from the national level on what enforcement works. There are a lot of opinions from administration and unions at the school, so we just need to get what the school wants down. Okay, and then can I have a second question? Yep. What, how do we reach out to you? Um, you can email me. Um, my email is in the list of presenters from today, but um, it's Cecilia Schaefer at MSU. You can reach out to um, either myself or President Omar. Yeah. I have you. the contact information if any of you guys are interested. We also mentioned it beginning of this year during our meetings, and so if any of you guys want to join it, just let me know. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Any other questions? Any other questions? Yeah, John. Can you just clarify for the student government what you're looking for from them? Uh, we want input on what the student government sees best um, for enforcement or the policy. That's the input that we want. And they meet once a month. Oh yeah, we meet once a month, so it's about two hours once a month. Um, it's not a big, big time commitment, so. Are there any other questions? Any other questions? Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you so much. Yeah. Next, we have Students United. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Hello. How are you doing today? Great. Yeah. How are you? Doing great. Um, yeah. Thank you. A little bit sleep deprived, but I will do my best. Amen. <laughs> Uh, my name is Ola Bimbola. I'm the State Chair for Students United. My name is Sandra Shemba. I am the State Vice Chair for Students United. Essentially, uh, she's the boss. Uh, I'm just <laughs> the imposter hype. <laughs> and uh, she's sort of my auto ego as well, so keeps me in line. Wow. Um, we're very happy to be here. Uh, it's an honor to um, visit your campus, I have to say. No. It's a magnificent spectacle. Um, Shall I, is that too much? <laughs> You'd like to say it's a pretty nice campus. It's a lovely campus, yes. Um, and um, I would like to thank um, President Omar for showing us around. Um, we're here, we're not here for um, anything other than getting to know you guys and letting you know how we represent you. So um, I'll be, um, very pleased if I get some questions after this presentation. It's going to be pretty basic. Uh, so what is Students United? Uh, Students United was established in 1967, so just about 50 years. Uh, we celebrated our 50th, just a couple of years ago. And we are essentially a non-profit organization and operated, it was created by the students, uh, so it's a student-based organization. And um, I will um, allow Vice Chair Chim Chimba to um, go to our old chat here. Um, so our organization is pretty simple. We're um, student-led. So at the very top of the organization, um, we have the seven student body presidents that act as board of directors, um, out of which um, President Ormar is one of those. Um, and then right underneath, so they're like the decision makers. And then right underneath is me, Ola, and the treasurer, which is Prapti Narula. She's a student from St. Cloud and couldn't make it today. 
Uh, so we are basically the mouthpiece of the organization. Um, whatever the board of directors um, decide as objectives or things they want to focus on, we actually just bring it out um, to the students, to the staff. Um, underneath um, the officers, you have um, the executive director. Um, she is the head of all the um, St. Paul staff, uh, and out of which we have five directors. Uh, you have a uh, director of development, which um, she deals with like grants, scholarships. Um, sometimes during the years, um, you would hear there's during the spring there's like scholarships that Students United has. Um, she deals with that. She writes uh, grants um, for the organization. Uh, we also have a government of um, I can't believe you. government of um, um, relations. Uh, so government relations is basically the one who reaches out to the legislators um, and organizes um, the advocacy days, advocacy sometimes advocacy conference, um, the lobby trips that we do in DC. You have a PR director of PR. Um, she's responsible for tweeting a lot of stuff and <laughs> setting up the, uh, the websites. Uh, you also have a director of operations, um, and you have a director of equity and, inc and inclusion. We also have a, an assistant director, um, an assistant director of advocacy. He, um, he kind of coordinates all the campus coordinators um, and just tells them what is, need what is needed from them, what they need to be doing um, relate regarding the objectives. And then on each campus, you have a campus coordinator who supervises, who supervises five specialists. Um, you have a specialist for diverse, I mean, equity and inclusion, um, PR, um, government relations, and a, an objective specialist who kind of looks out for all the objectives um, on the campus. So yeah. Thank you. I'm not sure if you guys noticed anything there. Um, she says, um, she essentially wanted to say that we are the humble servants of the directors. <laughs> and um, she is the boss, and then me, then Prati. Uh, so I, I like to keep it that way. Um, I'm going to go through the basics. Uh, Students United is essentially a coalition of seven state universities. Um, and a very um, enviable uh, president. Um, <coughs> she is one of those directors, and they essentially make the decisions, just like my colleague mentioned. And uh, we also have, we also happen to be, uh, uh, we have non-voting members, so it's the, the three officers, we don't get to vote, we just do what they tell us to do. Um, and we represent um, the students through the board members, through the presidents of these universities. And uh, we also have counterparts across the state. So the two-year colleges, uh, they have an uh, organization called Lead MN that represents them as a statewide organization. Uh, one thing that I also wanted to mention is that we are a nonprofit. I think I mentioned that before. We're 501 c uh, So we are essentially a state association and a nonprofit run by the students, led by the students. Uh, so um, that is very important uh, that we know that you all are Students United. Uh, we just happen to be at the right place at the right time. <laughs> okay, um, and um, so you are all are uh, part of the process. So essentially, um, like he said, um, it's led by Minnesota State um, University students. We are the inclusive voice of the past, future, and incoming students. Um, and we represent and support all the Minnesota State students. We advocate on their behalf. Um, and we, we advocate for the policies, um, for higher education policies that have a good effect on us. Um, so Students United, basically, just like I said, will be the inclusive voice for all the past, future, and incoming students. Um, we also advocate for like affordability, and, and just like you'll get to see what our objectives are very soon. Okay. Now, why are we worth your time? Um, I know you guys have a lot of important things to do, um, but I'm essentially going to just go through this um, reason why we're here. Um, now, Students Net is led by your peers, 
Students United. Um, we set an agenda every year. Uh, we essentially help make change at the higher education level. Um, so we get to meet with um, legislators. We get to meet with um, bargaining units like IFO and uh, MUSAF. And we also uh, get a seat on the table uh, during certain decision making that happens. Uh, that is what the officers do. Uh, but Student United um, access, has access to, we essentially lobby on your behalf. Um, you know, and we have um, access to affecting policy. So if there is a bill somewhere and we know this is going to affect the students, we're the first to knock on the door and say, you know, how, do, how can we push this through? Is it going to be positive or do we want to fight against it? As you know, you guys know, uh, there's something called um, uh, higher education reauthorization that has been a topic for over a year now. Uh, it's going to affect, um, you know, getting grants, uh, getting financial aid, those kind of things. So we want to make sure it's a comprehensive process. So, Student United provides learning opportunities for the students that volunteer to be involved in how the organization is run. So essentially, um, students that go to our delegates' conferences, they get to help make decisions. They write motions that get made into policy and um, essentially determines where we stand on certain issues that are pertinent to students. Uh, we also provide professional development. Uh, I could use my example. Um, I don't like to gloat, but um, Essentially, Students United um, being involved um, allows you to rise up the ranks a little bit, um, depending on how lucky you are. I just happen to be very lucky. But anyways, um, I started as a volunteer uh, action team member. Um, and um, I went on to join the campus staff. They used to be called campus committee. Then I became a legislative specialist. Then I became the you know, the campus coordinator, then I became student body president, and here I am <laughs> as a state chair. Um, so there's a little bit of professional development that Students United provides. Um, so uh, I didn't know any of the stuff that I'm talking about now, three years ago. Um, and um, so the students actually, if you want to be involved, uh, Students United Afford gives you that opportunity. Um, and, um, you know, net networking with the students, so if you want to you know, pursue a professional career in the future, you get a chance to meet with legislators, um, administrators on campuses, um, and uh, it's a great opportunity for students to meet people that actually matter, they're gonna help your future. So um, it's actually pretty cool to be part of the process. Okay, and we have a video here for you guys. <laughs> I love the good highlight video. Really? Yeah. <laughs> the sound is great. Yeah, I just feel like there are so many things that I really appreciated about this experience that is really hard. I think on a broad level, I just really appreciated all the people I got to work with. Um, okay, my favorite thing in the first semester was probably just visiting the campuses. Visiting the campuses was super great because I've been designating everyone like the best of who's got the best what. I loved every time I got to see the coordinators. I just had like so much energy after walking away from our campus committees. I'm, I dubbed this year the year of change and the advocacy conference is kind of what we as a whole team just came up with as an idea this year and I, it's kind of my child with my term Aww. I feel like. I'm so excited about this advocacy conference. It's an opportunity to, we've spent so much time and energy on issues that we care about, which I think is amazing, oh, but now oh, we're really just spending time and energy on giving students tools, resources, skills, and ideas about how to meaningfully actually tackle those. I think it for me, the moment it hit me that like this organization, what it had meant to me, what it means to students that I'd actually done something was at the advocacy conference. I mean, the conference as a whole um, is something that since I became 
a member of a committee in this organization, I wanted something like this to happen. And then it did. Um, and students loved it and like the high energy throughout the entire conference and the awesome presenters that we had. And the whole time I was just thinking like, this is how good it is in the inaugural year. If the board decides to do this again next year, like I could see this becoming, you know, like, like the conference that students look forward to five years from now who do any type of advocacy work, whether it's with us or not. Done. Serving looks, serving students. Tagline. Okay. You two, you always look good, but there have been some pic like David and I have had a lot of photo shoots. We've had a lot of photo shoots and I look better when David's around. I wanna bring him with me to every photo I take in the future. And then like the three of us are just the best dressed officers I think that there have ever been. You know? Like I, I, I think I dress fairly well. You do. Yeah. So does David. I'm fashionable. Yeah. David's I'm, really good. David's, David's really good. good. David's, David's the best funny. dressed. Yeah. But you and I are also good. Yeah. We got the DC trip coming up, uh, which is dope because we've super expanded it. So now instead of just board members and officers going, all of our campus uh, committee coordinators are coming as well. So we will have we've got 17 seats available for this DC trip, and hopefully it looks like we'll get 15 or 16 there with everyone's schedules. So that is a mass amount of students that are coming all the way from Minnesota to meet face to face with federal legislatures and groups like NCLC who work out in DC that we have a relationship with. Cool opportunity for students and great opportunity for us as an organization to lobby on behalf of our issues. Uh, by far my favorite experience so far has been going to DC and talking with staff and some of our representatives. I think that was very beneficial to our organization and to us achieving our federal legislative agenda. Um, and our presence definitely was needed there, so I had a great time doing that. Actually, one thing I didn't have planned that is probably one of my biggest accomplishments of this year would be the staff that we hired. I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't my plan, but it happened and I'm actually really glad it did. I think absolutely one of the things I'm most proud of this year is the Executive Director Search Committee and our decision as a search committee I served I appointed the search committee and served on it. Who chose Carly this year is definitely one of the things for years to come that I get to be proud of outside of my term. I think C Day is my favorite thing uh, that we do every year. That's my consistent like go-to. Um, and Advocacy Day is going to take place right after the Advocacy Conference, which is perfect timing. Um, while all these skills and things are fresh in our head, we're then going to take like 50 students to the Capitol. Seven from each campus, I believe. Yeah, seven from each campus. And have them advocate with the legislatures in the, their respective districts at their university, as well as some of them meeting with their legislatures from their home district. And we'll be bringing our state legislative agenda and Hopefully they'll decide they really just want to give us money and care about what we have to say and follow through on all of it. So that's my lofty goal for Advocacy Day. And that's another good, um, really great opportunity for students that's just unique that you don't get in a lot of other places. Just coming here to the Capitol and seeing that you, know, you can immediately like, meet legislators and people who fight the law, like where our schools are located, and you can sit down and talk to them and tell them the things we can do and try to get them to advocate for, advocate for us as well is awesome. For me, I, I, I would have to say it was when I was testifying on behalf of the um, Promise Grant. Um, just me being in the room and just being surrounded by our legislators and having the chair just pay a lot of attention to the things that I was saying. Um, I think everyone in the room kind of picked up that was being very attentive. I appreciate that. We don't get that a lot from our legislators. They tend to like overlook us, especially you know when it comes to things that they may not care about personally. But for some reason, I felt that he was very interested in the conversation. He listened to everything I had to say. For me, a goal that I had, and I said this when I ran for state chair, and I really had it in why I wanted to run, was to improve our coalitions. And it's one thing that I actually think I, um, we did really well this year. I wanted to do that federally and at the state level, and we had more partnerships this year with Lead MN, with the Minnesota Youth Collective, with the U of M, than we have had in the past few years, at least since I've been around. Um, we've done more work with NCLC, signed on to more partnerships. Um, I was able to join that Federal Policy Alliance 
with NCLC and higher ed reauthorization. So I think, yeah, building coalitions, because we're a coalition ourselves, taking the seven individual schools and building one, but to partner that out um, for legislative priorities and system priorities was a huge goal of mine, and I think that we did well. I would say the biggest thing is just showing up. I think um, once you show up and you're at the table, um, we work really well together as a team, um, in my opinion we do, and you know, we can address people's concerns, we can prepare people to go into meetings, um, but you have to be there in order to get that type of support, so just showing up. I owe last year's board a huge thank you for setting me up to be successful this year. Um, Faisal, Alexi, and Ben gave me the inspiration to make sure that I built the type of team I needed with Elijah and David. But I absolutely loved doing this work. So yeah, that was um, kind of some highlights that we had from last year. And as you all were probably wondering, what are the objectives? You keep on talking about objectives. Where are they? All right. So um, here are what our organization is um, focusing on this year. Yes, I um, just mentioned, as you can see uh, from that video, we had um, commentary from our previous board. Um, there was a lot of information there that we wanted to share with you guys. Um, we will be releasing our own mixed diverse soon. <laughs> so, uh, right, we. Um, we are working on student voter registration this year. Uh, we understand the ramifications of students not exercising their constitutional rights. Um, you know, we want students to be involved. We want students to be involved in the decision making process by which we elect our officials that represent us. So we are intensifying efforts uh, in this regard uh, by making sure that the university administrators and um, Minnesota State uh, create more visibility for this. I'll give you an example. On campus students, I know you guys already do that, but there's a lot of campuses that don't. Uh, registering someone when they want to sign up for where they're going to live on campus. Uh, or putting it, you know, putting a little advert when there's time to do so in your e-services or somewhere on the D2L. You know, just to make sure that students are aware that, you know, um, the, of the importance of doing this. And um, some of these organizational objectives, it's not just to make sure that something happens on campus and we just go into campuses and saying, we want you to do this. We want to collect data. We want to know uh, how feasible it is to accomplish some of these goals. And we also want to know what's going on on each campus and how we can better advocate for them and how we can make things better. Um, uh, Sandra's going to talk about the food and housing security. So you guys expressed what you guys wanted to see, um, and you guys expressed that through um, President Omar, and we heard. So food and housing and security was something that was very um, strongly felt by our board members, and that's why it's here. So we really want to work on um, trying to palliate on this um, food, in food and housing insecurity gap. Um, another, um, another objective that was really strongly felt, um, and I know this because I was part of last year's delegate, um, and especially to your school, um, you guys were really passionate about international student health care, and it's in the objectives. We really want to focus on it, and we have started working on it already. All right, uh, carbon commitment. Um, I was forced to do this. Um, don't ask me who did, um, because I'm an environmental science student, so someone decided to pick on me. Um, so essentially, um, I'm very passionate about sustainability, and um, I remember writing, I think, one of my first motions about this topic, even though I had no idea what I was doing. But we came through. Uh, carbon commitment. Uh, we know that some student, um, some universities are, are lagging behind a little bit uh, in terms of their recycling and composting. We have some schools that actually have really cool tech uh, using um, some of the uh, food waste uh, to produce energy. You know, so we want to collect data about this. We want um, the universities to actually sign the carbon neutrality agreement. But we're not only doing this, we want to find out um, 
where everyone is um, and how we can better make our campuses more environmentally sustainable. So this is one of our recurring uh, organization objectives. It's come up a lot of times. All right, so we've noticed that there's been, um, through the past years, there's been a lot of um, misconceptions between where Students United stands and where student government stands. So um, Students United and student government have a lot of similarities, but they also differ in some places. They're, so both of them are organizations. They're directed by students, but Students, students United does not micromanage your campus. Students United does not interfere with things that are going on on your campus. We basically kind of add, act like an advisory board or an advisory person, um, which kind of advise the, um, the campuses or advocate also for the campuses. So kind of there's those misconceptions. And so ultimately, we're a nonprofit, uh, nonprofit organization um, whose members are a coalition of students attending the seven um, Minnesota State students, and we stay in our lane. Yes, essentially, uh, we are not going to interfere with your student government. Uh, President Omar, you have my full support. I am not going to um, meddle in your affairs, but I'm going to make sure I'm your best raving fan, you know, so, yes. And uh, all of you, all of you, uh, not just her, um, I'm here to represent everyone, just in case you're wondering. Um, so. Let's go next slide. We have events coming up. Um, we have a board meetings, and we have advocacy conference in February. Before that, we have a delegate. Uh, where is that showing up? So delegate's the first thing, yes. That's gonna be in Winona. Uh, we're very excited about that. That is an opportunity for you all um, to represent your university and uh, advocate on behalf of your university. Uh, so essentially writing motions and trying to pass um, legislation. And um, we have a board meeting in December. It's going to be virtual. And we're going on to uh, Jan. Yeah, so we have one in Cairo. So we're going to be back here in January. How cool mm. is that? I hope there's not going to be too much snow, but um, I look forward to it. Um, then. Um, Advocacy conference is something that we started last year. As you, can, as you heard from the video, our state chair from last year um, you know, was very excited about that. It was a huge success. So we are hoping um, to do a good job this year and increase the um, uh, you know, attendance for that conference. And we've got uh, a federal lobby day. Uh, so we have advocacy day. Obviously, uh, we've got state capital. Uh, we uh, essentially talk to senators and representatives of Minnesota, and uh, we tell them, you know, um, this is what we would like you to advocate for us. And um, we have the federal lobby day. Um, I was privileged to be involved in that last year. And, um, you know, we go to DC, and we meet with NCLC and some really, um, uh, you know, powerful organizations that's going to help us to accomplish our goals. So we essentially, uh, we represent all of the students in Minnesota during these federal trips. Um, then we have a spring conference and a penny golf scramble um, to um, end the event. And then um, just to kind of clarify, we talk about advocacy, advocacy, yeah. But like during advocacy day, you get to go and talk to your legislators. It's not only us, it's not only President Omar. You also get to go and t talk personally to your legislators and tell them what you're passionate about. Okay, just a recap of um, what we're working on this year. We have our organizational objectives. Remember, this was what your uh, presidents decided that we will be doing this year. I'm just a humble servant to make sure that happens. Um, so hold me accountable for doing what you'd ask me to do, and I'm going to do my best. Um, right, we've got um, our legislative agendas. Now, these are made during our conferences. So we have... Um, a state legislative agenda and a federal legislative agenda. So this is essentially what we present to our legislators to tell them, okay, this is where we stand this year and this is how you can help us. Um, and then obviously we have a board votes and agenda items. Um, so at the conclusion of our year, uh, we have a final delegates conference usually in April. We get to decide who will be the next officers for next year. Um, 
Yeah, advocacy, advocacy, advocacy. That's what we are about. Um, we are here to help, and I will be entertaining questions. Um, I hope you have plenty. Are there any questions for Students United? Any questions? Last call, do we have any questions? Senator Rouse. Um, uh, what have you done so far this year to uh, complete the four objectives you guys have? Now, uh, the objectives, uh, it takes, a, we have meetings in order to have more meetings. Um, so this is a long process. I would, I would rather just go in and get it done. I mean, I used to be a campus staff person, but there's a process. So as you say, trust the process. Uh, we actually decided this um, two board meetings ago. So we are in the planning phase. Oh. And, and part of the planning phase is meeting with different stakeholders of the state. So we've had two meetings with the chancellor, we've had two meetings with the board of trustees, we are meeting with university presidents, campus tour as we are doing right now. And um, you know, essentially we want to collect data before we decide what, how we're going to do those things. We are representing your voice. So we're not just, just going to say, yeah, oh, we have four organization objectives and we're just going to do what we think is best. We want to know what you think. Uh, so that way we know how we can help and how we would carry out this thing. So essentially by the next board meeting, we will enter the um, plan meet planning phase. We, we already doing uh, things in the background with the, comp you know, with the, uh, the staff in St. Paul. And um, part of this thing, the planning is to collect data. We want to know where, this, you know, where the students are at. Um, I'll give you an example. The, the health insurance for international students. Um, in the last meeting with the chancellor, we wanted to find out what was going on with that. Students want accountability. They want to know where their money is going. They want to know what they can do with this insurance. Uh, so if you're feeling ill, do you want to go to the clinic or do you want to go to the doctor and pay $300 afterwards? Or if you want to take a shot, it, takes you, it costs you almost $200 or more. You want to know about that before you do it. I mean, we are, I don't know, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not, I'm not very, um, you know, I don't have money to, <laughs> to waste on that kind of stuff. You know, so we want students to be on the table. You know, we, the students need to be aware of how things are done. So essentially, uh, we ask them to find a contract, just to simplify things. Find a contract from the last insurance and um, know when it's going to end and, um, who are we to speak to um, when the next one is going to be made? Uh, so that's essentially what we, we've done so far. Are there any other questions? Um, President Omar? Um, this is more of a comment for the fall delegates from November 22nd through the 24th. I will be inviting our campus coordinator to come speak. There is a certain amount of senators and students that can go to the conferences. It is all based on enrollment and how they're going to delegate that to the Senate University. And so as we get closer to that date, we'll have final numbers and how you guys can sign up to go if you guys are interested. Are there any other questions? Any other questions? Any other questions? I'd like to remind you they don't. They aren't able to make it here often because they're up in the cities. So with that, are there any other questions? I do have a question. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> oh, sorry. I know this is parliamentary procedure. Um, am I allowed to do a chant? <laughs> would, uh, yeah, would, we can do one. Real quick. Uh, you know, um, I think um, this, this kind of gives the energy. Uh, this is what I do whenever I have meetings. I like to lighten up the mood. Um, when I say students, you say united. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Got it. Students. United. Students. United. Go set. Yeah. I forgot. I messed it up. Okay, let's start again. So when I say go, you say state, right? Okay. Students. United. Students. United. Students. United. Go state. Perfect. Thanks for having us. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. So now we will have a presentation from the city of Mankato. Yeah, I'm not funny. He's gonna be like, Hi. Okay. Hey, thanks everybody um, for allowing me to come speak to you today. I know you got a kind of a full uh, full bench of good presentations today. I think I'm the last one, so I'll try to jog through it. Um, I'm gonna hand out two uh, piles of papers, and you can just take one and pass it down. It should be enough there. Um, so um, 
My name is Charles Androvsky and I'm a transportation planner with the Mankato, North Mankato Area Planning Organization. Um, and the reason I'm here today is um, we're doing um, a corridor study um, for Warren Street uh, in Mankato, uh, a segment particularly um, in between Highland Park down to Riverfront Drive. Um, and as part of our corridor studies and all of our studies, we like to have a strong public engagement, stakeholder engagement and input um, period. Um, so we're kind of in phase one planning, kind of similar to the Students United where they're in a phase one uh, or an early planning phase of the project. That's where we are as well. So we're walking into this um, without any assumptions. Um, we're trying to just get an understanding of how people use the Warren Street, um, how do they use the corridor from like a multimodal perspective. So um, if you're in your personal automobile, if you're on a bicycle, if you're a pedestrian, um, also um, with regard to American with Disabilities Act or ADA accessibility vehicles with wheelchairs, um, we're trying to get a comprehensive view of how people in the area are using Warren Street. Um, so we're, uh, this is the, the study and actually we're going to, throughout the study we're, we're going to be developing certain designs and different alternatives and concepts that will then kind of further refine, we'll work with the City of Mankato, we'll work with residents um, and ultimately in June of, uh, of next year we're going to um, hand over the concepts to the city of Mankato, who are then going to use those concepts to help inform the reconstruction of the corridor that's going to happen in 2021. So this is really a good time to be um, kind of on the ground floor of how this corridor is going to develop. So I've just been engaging with different folks, different um, local businesses and property owners, and we thought that MSU would be a good um, stakeholder and a very important stakeholder to engage throughout this process. So I hope that um, today I can introduce the study to, to you all, and maybe we can start kind of a conversation um, that we can continue over the next uh, couple of weeks and months. Um, I'm going to provide you with um, ways to get into contact with the study, um, ways to provide your input for the study. Um, on, this, on the handouts, um, we've got uh, the website domain for the study. It's mnmapo.org uh, slash warren. Um, uh, also, my contact information is on the handout as well. And I think what I'll do is I'll connect with Anissa after this presentation and ask her to send out my email and my contact info out to this group as well so you'll have it right in your inbox. Um, and I guess I'd like to hear your input. Um, and also if you could disperse that and kind of let folks know about the study among your own networks, um, I think that would be a, a good way to get MSU involved um, and make sure that people are informed here at the ground floor. I do want to make folks aware we have an open house that everybody's invited to as members of the public. It's on October 24th. Um, that's going to be um, downtown at the Mankato Inter Intergovernmental Center uh, or the IGC down at 10 Civic Center Plaza. So um, we'll have staff on hand to talk about the project and take input then. Um, and then also throughout the project, if you can't make it to the open house, if you can't appear on site, um, we'll also um, accept comments through the website or you can mail them directly to me and I'll make sure that they get integrated and incorporated with the rest of the comments throughout the uh, throughout the project. Um, I, I, I think Anissa's this has got the, the, the map here. This is kind of what we're looking at here. Um, you can kind of see the corridor. It's a two lane up um, uh, above the hill up until we reach um, Glenwood um, or the Cherry Ridge Apartments area and then it turns into a four lane. Um, you know, lane configurations could be some of the things we, um, we look at. Um, we're looking at um, different road space and how, how the best way to maximize the road and serve the most possible users uh, throughout this project. So. Um, I think that um, MSU is going to be a good group to be involved in the project. Um, I should say too that uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Cowan, David here, is, does serve on our technical advisory committee, so you can connect with David. He can probably uh, provide my contact information if anybody has uh, questions as as well. Um, I think just um, logistically, I can I can take some comments now uh, and document those. Um, otherwise, just do, we're a pretty big group here today, so it might be better if you folks just. Uh, connect with me online, um, just kind of send me your comments. Um, just trying to be cognizant of everybody's time in the room today. You can send me your comments online, you can come to the open house, um, or you can visit the website and serve comments uh, on the website as well. But I think that's just a brief introduction. Again, we don't have any real assumptions about the corridor yet. Um, we're still kind of in an opening um, issues identification, identify challenges that people have, identify opportunities or different suggestions or ideas that people have for the corridor. Um, so we're at this beginning stage. This is kind of an introduction, and um, I'm happy to answer questions if there are, if there are questions today. And um, please, if you do have questions following up, um, just uh, give me a call or give me um, an email uh, later on, and we'll make sure you get uh, um, your comments incorporated with the rest of uh, with the rest of the public engagement.
Are there any questions or comments right now? Once again, we can get you that contact information. Um, any questions or comments? John. If I can, just some of these folks may not be completely familiar with the area. And so to point out some spots that might make sense to you all, um, if you're coming up Warren Street from Riverfront Drive, where this fork is, that is the street that comes up behind Crawford Mac, mm. between Valley Crawford Mac and Wissing, or uh, Weeking Hall. Wow. Okay. So this, oh, this, this if you were to come up that hill behind. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. So did that make sense where that fork was I was pointing to you? Yeah. This park is that park that's on the hilltop right here. There's a, uh, a picnic shelter real close to the street. Uh, and there's a playground there. Um, so where that fork was, just so that y'all can get your bearings straight. That street where that runs between the residence halls and Weeking Center, that makes more sense to you. But Highland or uh, Warren Street, if you stay left of that fork, uh, that's where they're talking about. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Are there any questions or comments? Any questions or comments? Any questions or comments? Seeing none, thank you so much for coming in today. <laughs> I will say, I'll, um, I'll stick around for another uh, 15, 20 minutes or so. I see some folks are, are writing notes on their on their sheets as well, so I'll stick around for a while. Um, please connect with me after. I'll get them get them uh, today. Otherwise, just give me a call or give me an email. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to keep moving if everyone could listen up so we can get going. Um, right now, we are open for open forum. Is there anyone here for open forum? Yes. Uh, All right. I'll make this quick and easy. So we have another pilot program coming up. October 25th on a Friday from 4.30 to 7 or 6.30 here on campus. We're just going to be doing like some basic primitive how to cook over a fire, how to build a fire, how to use an outdoor cooking stove. We're just going to roast some s'mores, hang out, have a good time. Yesterday and Friday we um, knocked out two pilot programs. We went hiking at Seven Mile Creek and we also did a birding event here on campus. We had a good turnout for both events. So we're rolling and, get, and have things um, uh, going smoothly for the semester. Um, so thanks again for the opportunity to work for constituents of yours and uh, do pilot programs. Thanks. Okay, so, uh, Senator Tyson. Thank you. Hi, so the reason I'm talking about this is not as like a Senate report is because that'd be inappropriate. Um, homecoming is this week. Happy Homecoming Mavericks. I have two things to talk to you about. They're very different in very different tones. First of all, I'm running for royalty. I would love it if you would all vote for me. Um, thank you. <laughs> It'd be great to have a senator be royalty because I can obviously promote student government and all the amazing stuff that we do. So I encourage you to all go online and vote at MNSU. You can just Google MNSU Homecoming Royalty. It's an engaged form. I would, I would love if you would vote for me. Voting does end tonight at midnight. So you have your last chances today to have student government be represented at Homecoming Royalty. Okay, the second thing I want to talk about is a lot different and a lot less exciting and happy. The reason that I didn't attend the, uh, the set of... Uh, the Senate meeting last week is because of the event that happened in Crawford and I wanted to address it before moving on with anything that we do in Senate today. So as many of you may have seen through the medical alert last week um, is the reason I was absent was because many of the people in the residential life community were affected by what happened in Crawford. Um, the thing that I want to note is that for the respect of the person who passed, the family and friends of people in Crawford, please do not ask for information about what happened. What happened in the report, what you read in the report, is all that you need to know. And it is only damaging to the people who are affected to spread rumors, to pass gossip, and to ask people who are affected about what happened. Um, it's just a really hard thing to talk about. And so I would really appreciate it if you would put rumors to bed. Uh, hearing things about it is only hurting the people who are affected. So I would also like to address that this is a, I'm a residential life senator, and this has really hit our community and so many people who are living in the res halls. So I want you to reach out to people who you know who have, might have been affected. I'm so thankful to my friends on Senate who have reached out to me, said things to me, but know that there are many students who are struggling right at this time. If you are a faculty member or you know people who are affected by it, please reach out to them to make sure that they're okay. Um, it's been a really hard time for everybody in the res hall, so I appreciate your support um, and appreciate you letting me come and talk about this issue. So thank you. I'm happy to <laughs> Seeing none, we will now move into the approval of the consent agenda. A few things that will be changed under Senator reports. Um, diversity committee is no longer giving a presentation. They had a class that started at 5. They'll be here next week. Um, Senator Suleiman will be with Senator Bashal, and Senator Soma will be with Akut and Bana. Um, is there any dissent to the consent agenda? Any dissent? 
Any dissents? Seeing none, the consent agenda is approved. Um, with that, we will now be moving into officer reports. President Omar. Hello, everybody. Mine is pretty short for today. Um, the food drive has finally concluded, um, and we have won the overall throughout the week received 2,200 items donated to the campus. And we received $900, over $900, 400 of which we got just walking around tailgating, standing at the um, doorway for the game. That's so amazing. that was really successful. Winona got 453 items, and they had $248. Good job for them. It's for a good cause, so we hope to do this next year. Um, secondly, we have meet and confer coming up tomorrow. It is from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. I will be sending out reminders to those of you who have signed up. It is going to be um, in CSU 203, so right down this hall. And so we do still have one spot left. If any of you guys are interested, it's 11.30 to 1 p.m., so just let me know. Um, and we do have hockey tickets um, in the Ooh. President's Box, November 1st. Yeah. We have 10 tickets left, so if you guys are interested, it's first come, first serve. So contact Amber and get that as soon as possible. We'll be facing off against Bowling Green. So 10 tickets, President's Box, November 1st. Don't forget. Mm. Um, and lastly, we do have a, well, two things. We are going to be walking in the homecoming parade. I'll be passing around a sign-up sheet. We have 15 spots. It is going to be on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And you do get officer hours if you show up. We'll be meeting in the student government office, um, and then we'll head down to the parade. Hopefully, if it does not rain, if it rains, the parade will be canceled. And so I'll pass this around. Um, our speaker's number will be leading that effort. And then something student government has been partnering up with Fraternity Authority Life, student events team, um, and International Student Association, and many other organizations on campus is regarding the UWE conference. Um, so registration is now live. You can sign up on Engage. Um, under student government, you'll find there are under events, just so you leave. Mm -hmm. there, will, there will be appetizers served there. It is free as long as you register, and then you can check in at the door. It is October 22nd from 5 to 9 p.m. And as it gets closer, I I could show you guys how to sign up. Do you guys know how to access Engage? You good at that? Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Sounds good. So um, October 22nd, 5 to 9 p.m. in the CSU, registration is on Engage, ULE conference. And with that, I stand for any questions. Are there any questions for President Omar? Yes, John. If I just may, on, on the ULE part, she mentioned registration open. We're asking for pre-registration because we're expecting a bigger crowd. We need to know numbers for food folks. So if you're planning on going, please sign up and then also share with all of your groups. Um, we know a lot of large number of faculty get off for exercise, but pre-registration is going to be key. We're actually considering at this point offering tickets to those who pre-register so that they are guaranteed to go through the food line. And then uh, for those who show up not registered, um, they can wait until those who get it, who actually do register go through the line. So, but we need to know for them for food. Okay, are there any other questions? Um, Senator Cherry. Can you explain what that is for someone who's only been on campus for a month? Um, I'll yield to the fraternity council president to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> he knows way more than I do. Uh, so right now we have uh, 16 sessions. So if you go to this and you attend it, you'll have uh, two breakout sessions and then one main keynote speaker with the appetizers come in. That's part of it. Um, so for the 16 uh, breakout sessions will be in different rooms in the CSU. Um, you'll have kind of like a menu of your choices on what you'd like to learn about. It's completely up to you. And then you'll go to that room for, I want to say about an hour. Uh, you'll listen to their separate breakout speaker. Go to the next one and then everybody meets together, gets some food and listens to the keynote speaker. And I think it's six to nine if Michael, or five to nine, sorry. So yeah. John, I have more details. I was going to speak on some few keynote speakers. There's Bobby. He does the Heart of a Leader training um, through Students United. Um, he'll be the keynote speaker for our ULE conference, and he's an amazing person. Um, what's the topic on again, John? Uh, it's the Heart of a Leader. Heart of a Leader training. <laughs> oh, okay. So I, all the board members go through with Students United. Our state and vice chair both went through this training. He is phenomenal. He'll be flying in and doing, um, and will be the keynote speaker. For the workshops, we'll have a privileged workshop um, from the Multicultural Center. We'll have our student attorney come and do a workshop on students and the law, especially when it comes to housing. Um, we do have a mental health, we're partnering up with Mental Health Mankato, um, and they'll be doing a session. 
and that is just three among the many we will have. So. Lots of personal professional development. Yes, a lot of personal professional development. Are there, are there any other questions? Any other questions? Any other questions? Seeing none, Vice President Trenny. I just have two quick things. Well, one, hopefully everyone's having a good homecoming week. I watched the food eating competition. All right, um, so we had the city and university meeting. Thank you, President Omar and Senator Mal 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 Maltari. Yeah, she's over there. Thank you for coming. Um, we had a good discussion on like issues around Mankato, um, like s crosswalks, the high V, um, and I'll probably email out everyone instead of just saying it here what like we talked about. That way it's quicker. Um, and then Senator Prom wanted me to pass around. So we're tailing on Monday for student government, and he and our coordinator wanted to make it a mental health awareness kind of theme this week. Um, so he's passing around a sign sheet. It does count for office hours, so please sign up and please sh come. It's gonna be fun. Um, and with that, I yield. Are there any questions for Vice President Trenny? Any questions? Any questions? Seeing them, we'll move into my um, officer report. Um, first thing, office hours will be due next week. Um, if there are any questions, I know that we have like a bunch of new senators, which is great, very exciting. If you have any questions about what counts as office hours, what doesn't count. Um, where you need to submit them, let me know. I can answer those for you and we can get you going in the right direction. Um, Senator reports. If anybody has the Senate report sign up sheet from last week, if you could like get that to me, <laughs> that'd be great. I've handed it around like three times and it's never made it to this side of the table. So I've decided I'm just gonna email the people that I don't have signed up yet and I'll email you like a link to sign up. So be looking out for that email. Um, I'll also let you know how many you need to sign up for. So. I'll email you. I'm over passing it around the table. Um, beyond that, um, please come to the parade. It's going to be lots of fun. We're going to try to strap a giant balloon to my car. So, like, if you can come and help, that'd be great. Um, and we're going to be like passing out candy. We might have some flyers. It'll be a good time. We can also decorate my car if we want to. I will also be once we get the sign up sheet back. We will be getting this one back to me. Um, once we get that sign-up sheet back, I'll email you guys more information. I will also email you if it gets canceled. It is forecasted to rain. I will know by either Friday night or 7 a.m. on Saturday. So make sure you check your email Friday and Saturday if you sign up. Please do. It should be fun. It's also on campus, so it's not like a hassle to get there or anything. Um, but yeah, are there any questions for me? Any questions? Yes, Senator. Any dress code for that? No, um, yeah, wear Maverick stuff. School spirit, it'll be fine. Um, we'll be meeting in the office at 10 a.m. to line up for the parade. The parade starts at noon and should be done by 1. Once again, rain is forecasted, so we'll keep you posted. Are there any other questions? Any other questions? Seeing none, we will now move into Senator reports. We have the Academic Affairs Committee. Woo! Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Sam. I'm the Academic Affairs Coordinator. Um, so, last week we finally got our last vacancy spots filled on our committee. So, that's awesome. I now have a full committee. Um, really excited about that. Um, but so far this year, we've been talking a lot about textbooks and the Maverick Textbook Reserve, um, especially Vice President Trenny and I. Um, we've held meetings with um, Dean Corley in the library, and uh, President Tr or Vice President Trenny has had a lot of meetings with Janine in the um, with the bookstore. Um, so we're really working to help expand the Maverick Textbook Reserve and make sure that it is effective for students and that it's also uh, accessible to students as well. Um, Janine has been incredibly helpful and instrumental with the bookstore. So um, she's really been a great help with a lot. Um, and then we've also been working on a study habit uh, and academic success campaign um, within academic affairs. So with this, we would be um, promoting resources that our university has that are helpful to the success of our students here. Um, and then also um, doing programming that result or revolves around um, positive study habits, uh, ways to be successful in and out of the classroom. Um, and part of that is we were hoping to um, 
have a breakout session within you lead. So it hasn't been confirmed yet. I need to talk with other people. Um, but today we discussed um, what that would look like for us if we were to have a breakout session. Um, and we discussed having um, a panel of academic affairs senators um, talking about their own personal leadership opportunities that they've had, how they've been successful, how maybe they haven't been successful, ways that other students um, can be successful. Um, and that would be a panel led by uh, academic affairs senators. Um, and I will also begin meeting with um, deans from different colleges to start discussing first year experience um, and how everything with first year experience is going with um, having those classes geared towards individual colleges. So I will have more to report on that after I begin meeting with them. Are there any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Thank you so much. Senator I'm Senate. Um, my name is Arnavi, and I'm Senator at Large. So this is going to be a little longer than you I expected. Um, so me and Senator Busal, she's off-campus senator. We have been working on status of women's commission, and we are planning on setting up a panel for the women women so that this so like we have started a series where student where like students who are leaders on campus especially women can talk about the struggles and their roles on whatever they that that made them a leader on on campus this is to spread awareness and mo motivate the people around and so sophie is going to help us to so shout out to sophie she's going to be on the panel and we are reaching out to registrar's office that they might add it to gender and women studies for an extra credit and we are reaching out to international center so that if like so we expect a large number of audience coming up to for the event shout out to senator Winesville. he is helping us with the posters and promotions so yeah uh, we are working on that sneha would be talking about what actually the event is so yeah she'll be talking explaining more about it and for my personal project it was a study abroad project um, so i met with daniel schwartz from international center and we have prepared a presentation that can be sent to the direct directors in india i'm still working on statistics how it how it might benefit the students of MSU and like how it might benefit us economically. I don't, I'm still working on it and I'm still waiting on hearing back from the directors of India. So yeah, that's, I yield. Are there any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Seeing none? Next we have Senators Bashal and Suleiman. Hi everyone, thank you Student Affairs Committee for supporting with all of the projects. Uh, first, we will like to talk about the collaboration of the um, Senator project with uh, Senator, Khaled. Senator Khaled and me. We are doing a survey after a long time. The last survey for off-campus housing has been done on 2012, so we started a survey about um, housing, off-campus housing, r transportation, and other um, rent and other stuff. Uh, we are almost done with the survey. Uh, we just need a thumbs up from John so that we can send it out. And we are also looking forward to getting a list of um, off-campus housing resident people so that we can send it out specifically to them. So like whenever uh, John is ready, like reading all the questions, we, we, I'm gonna email, we're gonna email everybody on this board so we can start. Oh, I said whenever like, John is ready, like go through the question, we can, I'm gonna, so we're gonna send an email to everyone on this board so we can pass out the question, like the link 
so all of campus students will know so we can have a quick result ASAP. So after that, we're going to break out the statistic. So we're going to like share the data with you guys. And uh, for the committees I've been working with is uh, Status of Women. We just had our first meeting, which was really interesting. Um, I will talk about it when I get more information about them. And we did have IP roundtable where we got to talk about uh, many things like National Cybersecurity Month, as uh, you all know, uh, talked about uh, different kind of uh, little topics around technology and let me talk about the Women Empowerment Program which is very interesting to me. Um, on a vision to get a domestic woman and international woman together and like motivate women all around the campus we and me and uh, Senator Maltari has started a series of program probably going to be a series by monthly um, our first event is going to be on 21st October, which with uh, four student leaders who have impacted our society and PR, as Anavi said, PR uh, officer Andrea is working on the poster. A poster. And uh, we've been working with Ann Allman, Women's Center, and other uh, resources around the campus. We'll be talking about uh, women resources around the campus in that event. So yeah, that's the first event looks like, and thank you. I yield for question. Are there any questions about either topic? Uh, President Omar? So October 21st, where is the um, program going to take place? Australia. Uh, Australia. Nice. Okay. At what time? 4 to 5.30. I hope to see you all there. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Senator Weissel? Yeah, I'd just like to make a note that it would be great if everyone could come to support this like student government led project and then also to support like women's leadership, especially for the women at this table. Like you know like how awesome it is to be involved and what opportunities that opens up to you. So we would love to see you there and participate. It was more of a statement than a question, sorry. Very good. Um, are there any other questions? Any other questions? Any other questions seeing that? And then finally, we have Senators Akut, Bana, and Soma. Yay! Let's go. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. My name is Agul Akut. Can you hear me? Yes? No. There's no mic. There's no mic. <laughs> <laughs> Good, good, good. Um, I'm serving as an off-campus senator. Um, my name is Fatima Bana, and I'm serving as an off-campus senator. And my name is Janet Solma. Oh, sorry. <laughs> my name is Janet Solma, and I'm an off-campus senator. Um, we are here to present our project, Adulting 101. Um, and our main goal is to better prepare our peers for adulthood and whatever life throws at them. And the topics we are including to our the topics include learning the various basics of adulting, such as cooking, cart maintenance, um, finances, and much more. And we'll be covering these topics throughout the semester. And um, the first topic we'll be talking about is the Renter's Guide to Housing. And it will be on Tuesday, the 29th of October, from noon to, to 1 p.m. And we hope to see you guys there. Um, John will be presenting. Right here. He's over there. He's over there. On the other side. He's over there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he will be presenting. Um, and then the next topic that we plan to talk about is the financial literacy. We actually had a meeting with um, Wells Fargo branch manager, and he has agreed to present that day. We haven't figured out the date yet, but we're like, doing the one, one um, project at a time. So for now, we're just um, on the renter's guide to housing, which is like talk about um, leases and how to sign the lease and um, individual lease and joint lease and all that good stuff, so. Um, we are also working on getting approval to um, go to the first year seminar classes and present during those classes. And Andrew said he would make us some posters. 
Yay. And um, we are going to be tabling, and we're going to get a sign-up sheet for you guys next week. So if you guys could help us out, that'd be great. That's enough. Questions? Um, um, what location is it CSU 203. CSU yes, 203. that. And just to note, you guys will receive office hours if you attend. So support student government events, get office hours. Yes. And yes. Thank you guys. Yeah, are there any other questions? I was going to Any other questions? Awesome. Now you guys are good. Yay, yeah, good job. Okay. So with that, we have no old business. Are there any motions for new business? Any motions for new business? Any motions? Seeing none, um, I just want to put out a reminder that we will have the off-campus senator vacancy next election next week. So come prepared to welcome another senator uh, to the table. Um, are there any announcements? No. President Omar. Um, so over the summer, I've been working on a little pet project. Um, I've been looking into possibly bringing in on a new organization on campus. And so with that, I found an organization called Ignite, and its mission is to help get women elected into office or support women who are. And so now we've got the go-ahead by the operations manager at the national organization to begin that chapter here. And so it will be called Ignite Women in Politics. Um, it will, the first meeting is going to be next Thursday from 5 to 6 in CSU 101. Uh, being that I'm surrounded by a lot of leaders at this table, sorry man, I'm not talking about you, oh. woman here. Um, I would love for you guys to come out and come join it. It is very important that we get more women elected into office. It's very important that we have our voices heard at the table. And so with that, I yield with that. Any questions? I'll have posters for next week as well, the day before the reminder, uh, the day before the event to remind you guys. And lastly, over the weekend, it was our wonderful advisor's birthday. Board 
is uh, co-sponsoring that with them as well. We're doing smoothie bikes tomorrow. So if you're interested in coming down, take care of some music, and then get a free smoothie. Uh, so come cool. over and get on, the, get on the bike and pedal around a little bit for your smoothie. Um, that's the first event for the Union Board. We had our first meeting uh, last Friday, and we have our schedule set for the rest of the semester. Okay. So we've got a good start. We haven't left our officers yet for the Union Board. Once we do, I'll announce that it's a, it's a meeting. But come on down, partake 11 to 1 tomorrow in the in heart. First movie, right? First movie. Yep. Thank you. John. November 13th is the confirmed date for Student Affairs versus Student Senate uh, trivia. Uh, and so we'll be happening on that day after this meeting. We'll have a quick 30-minute meeting and then we'll go into the trivia. So, uh, but the annual, we get to take the trophy home again. Uh, oh. Uh, and then, uh, lastly, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that we are still looking for two people to serve on the Elections Commission. So if you know people who can be uh, fair-minded and all of that, and do not have plans to run for any elected position for next year, uh, please refer them to the people who are President Omar. I also have two more things to add. Um, Charles from the city of Mankato will be staying after to answer any questions or comments you guys have. Um, secondly, will, will any of you guys be at the parade? Who will be at the parade? Raise your hand. Maybe. Oh, perfect. So we still have nine spots left. <laughs> So you guys can go ahead and sign up. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. So we'll see you guys at the parade. <laughs> awesome. Bye, oh. President Trudy. Uh, we need two more for Constitution Commission. If you're interested, Constitution Commission. Yes. If, you, if you're interested in joining, please come see me or President Omar. We need two more. Okay. Are there any other announcements? Any other announcements? Um, Seeing none, um, is there any dissent to me not doing roll call? Nope. Any Absolutely dissent? Not. Any dissent? Never. Awesome. This meeting is adjourned at 542.